Hi Chris here and welcome to my Vensmile i10 Windows 10 mini PC review. So this is what uh, the packaging looks like. I got this here from Gearbest. It was a $112, so quite cheap. Now it's got the Atom Z3735 bay trail on here. This one clocks up to 1.8 gigahertz. It has 2 gigabytes of RAM and it has a 32 gigabyte eMMC drive in it. And Windows 10, as I mentioned, activated. It should be. Well, I'll check that out. There we go, so it comes in a square box like this, and you'll see shortly that it's a very unique mini PC with a couple of different things that we haven't really seen before in mini PCs. So a tiny little quick start guide there, that is in English, so it's just basically outlining the ports and getting started in Windows 10. And here we have the mini PC, which is very different and unique looking isn't it look at this it's a little funny round tube now what's unique about it is it has a microphone on the front and a camera so you could actually use this for Skype video calls and if we have a look on the back here there's our four USB 2 ports and it does have a RJ11 network connector it supports 100 megabits per second so not the fastest it's not a gigabit port but we do have wireless uh, AC on here so we've got 5 gigahertz band if needed and there's a 3.5 millimeter headphone out here's our power port and micro SD card slot now you see the bottom of it it has four rubber feet it's got tiny vents all around here because it actually has active cooling within it now that's not normally what happens with Atom mini PCs they don't normally need to have a fan on them because passively cooled is normally sufficient for an Atom but uh, they decided that they'll put a fan in here to make sure and keep it very nice and cool so there's going to be absolutely no throttling or heat issues so ideally you could have this running all the time now I know it's a bay trail so it's not the latest gen uh, cherry trail but the CPU performance is very similar on the cherry trails and the bay trails it's only the graphics that really changed on the cherry trail so this machine could be ideal for someone that wants to run maybe just a media center PC or another secondary PC or something just for maybe Skype but not gaming if you're gonna be gaming on this probably the performance won't be so good but I will have a look in this video shortly later on and we'll see just how well it does game so you can see the vent at the top so airflow comes in from the bottom and out the top there so I'll have a look and see what else is in the box obviously our power supply and they've actually included an HDMI cable so that's nice so full-size HDMI port is on the back there of course and here's the AC adapter for the EU which is good to see so it is rated to 5 volts 3 amps so that'll give us plenty of power there to power external hard drives and the rest of it via those USB ports just have a quick look and see just how tall this is because if someone's going to put this maybe in a TV cabinet then you want to know if it's going to fit well, I'm not sure the camera will work so it is uh, just 13 centimeters tall so rather tall, a lot taller than the other media PCs, little mini PCs you get with Windows. Normally some of them are actually just sticks or only literally about three or four centimeters higher. So it's a lot higher than those ones there. And the width of it, the circumference there, it's nine centimeters. So let's go and have a look now uh, just in detail at Windows 10 and run through some benchmarks and some games and see just how well this performs. So the i10 powered up quite quickly. What I did notice that as soon as I connected the power cable, a red light did come on, but it didn't automatically turn itself on. So it's not one of those units like the Peepo X8 and X9. If, as soon as you plug it in and give it power, it will start up. This one doesn't, unfortunately. So that's a, maybe a slight annoyance to some people. Now, if I just have a look here in System and show you that it is Windows 10 home and it is fully activated I've just connected my network cable to the unit there and Windows already installed a, an, an update here for me it's installed the latest Intel HD drivers and I'll show you to the free space we have available so we have 20.8 gigabytes free of the 28 so that's not too bad for a 32 gigabyte eMMC and my 64 gigabyte Samsung micro SD was detected just fine so no problems detecting that it should in theory support up to 128 gigabytes no problems even larger sizes I don't see Windows 10 having problems with that now the fan noise of the unit itself 
You can hear a slight buzz, but I don't think it's overly loud to be annoying. If this is going to be sitting maybe on a TV cabinet or next to a TV, I doubt you're really going to hear it. It's really just a slight buzz noise. I will hold the microphone now up to it so you can get an idea of just how loud it sounds. Now, I'm not sure that came through, but it's not loud at all. It's just a slight buzz. I have a quick rundown of the hardware that's on board. It takes a little while to load up, and we've got something there as an unknown device. I'm not really too sure what that is, but something doesn't have the drivers. I'll have to find that later on with Windows Update. So the disk drive is a generic N card, which normally tells me that's probably a B-Wind or 4C brand eMMC drive. I will be benchmarking that shortly in this video and show you the speeds. And under, most importantly, under the network adapters, just to check to see, yes, it is a wireless a, B, G, and N. So that's good to see. It's not a real tech card that we normally have in most of the tablets and mini PCs from China. And this does support 5 gigahertz band, which is handy if you're going to be using a lot of Bluetooth devices, which run off 2.4 gigahertz as well. If you switch to using 5, if your router supports it, then you shouldn't get the interference from those units at all. And things are running better when you want to run Bluetooth and the wireless connection. It also seems to be a little bit faster because there's less interference on that bandwidth. Now we have a signal processor with the inbuilt camera, which I will show you the quality of that soon, up and coming in this video. So there's the device matter. I don't think there's really anything else to show you. The processor is the Atom Z3735F. And there is honestly nothing else. There is no battery on board at all this machine, which is a shame. If they had a small battery in it, it would allow me to at least move it from a different room to another without having to power it down. So I'm just going to go into YouTube here and have a look at a couple of clips and see the performance of that and bring up the device manager before I start to install all my other applications and everything and have a look at the RAM usage. So we've already used that one gigabyte and have a look in YouTube. Okay, so I'm using the network connection as I mentioned, not the wireless. But I will test the wireless out later on. So run this in 1080p. Buck. Do you remember me? Your mom's name is Sarah. CPU seems okay for running this file. I mean, it's not really going past about 65%. Run this at full screen. Do that anymore. Well, the people who think you did are coming right now. So these atom processors will handle 1080p streaming fine for Netflix. I think you're going to be really pushing it, trying to play 4K. Captain. Speaking of 4K, I'm just going to transfer a short 4K clip that I recorded on my Galaxy Note 4. The transfer speeds limited to 22-23 megabytes per second. The micro SD card reader, so not fast. Okay, so to show you the properties of this, this is a 48 kilobytes per second, megabits per second. Sorry, 4K clip. I'm going to keep that CPU task manager up there. To look at how the resources are and see how it runs this. It's just using the movie and movies and TVs app. You can see that's actually playing that 4K clip really fine. Now streaming's different. If I skip ahead, that is very quick. Bear in mind this is only a short clip, but if you're gonna be playing a long 10, a long 4K clip there then I think it maybe it might be a little bit slower but overall that performance that is incredibly good considering this is just a low watt low power tiny little atom quad core and it's able to handle that really without any CPU load 15% so not bad at all I'll also do a 4k test just for the hell of it see how it handles it I don't expect it to be able to stream it this is running an edge
So they're going to set to 4K now. No dropped frames. Unbelievable, but let's see what happens when I put this to full screen. There we go, look at all those drop frames. It was just in the beginning, it's actually settled down now and there's no dropped frames anymore. So, dang, it's 68. That's not bad at all. It's able to keep up and stream 4K. So another one of the features they advertise on this tablet is the fact that it has a microphone and a camera. So you could use it for Skype. I'll just show you the quality of the camera. It's not good at all. It looks like a VGA camera and the position of it, it's not angled up. So it's angled straight ahead. This is my Surface 4 type cover. And you can see from this that it's not actually picking up really any details of the letters on the keyboard. And the lighting's quite good at the moment. So if I wave my hand in front here, you see that the frame rate of the camera is, I think, about 15 frames a second. So that's going to be pretty choppy for speaking on Skype. And you're going to have to sit right in front of it or somehow angle it up. So it's useless, really. It's a gimmick. Now, I did record some sound from the microphone that's within the actual i10 mini PC here. And you'll hear in this clip when I play it, the noise of the fan is in the background. It's being picked up by the microphone. This is a test of the built-in microphone on the Ben Smile i10 just to see how it sounds. I'm speaking about the distance you'd probably have it if you're using Skype. So really, what does that mean? That the internal microphone and the camera are both useless. They are gimmicks, complete gimmicks. You'd want to plug in an external Logitech webcam with its microphone on it, with the, the microphone array on top of that. And you would never want to actually use what's supplied. So that's a complete and absolute gimmick there. This Windows Store game here is Dungeon Hunter 5, and I'm controlling it with an Xbox 360 controller. I roll, it runs pretty smooth. There's the occasional stutter here and there. Nowhere left to run, Valorov. Oh God, it's the Death Knight! He found me! Go forth, my pet. Bring me the heart of that cow. You'll never take me alive, bounty hunter! And this last title I'm going to look at is Asphalt 8 Airborne, running on high settings, the default setting in 1080p. It's a little choppy, but it's running it okay overall. So overall, to conclude this review, can I recommend to people the Venmal i10 mini PC with Windows 10? No, I can't. For those two factors, the fact that the webcam's useless and the microphone, but the most important thing 
is the fact that it doesn't have a valid Windows 10 license. It's a hacked license. And that is absolutely shocking to see, really, that the fact that they're getting away with selling something like this that doesn't even have a valid Windows 10 license. So I cannot recommend it at all. I suggest looking at the Pipo X9 or the X8 if you want something a little smaller. That's a hybrid with a monitor, a tablet screen on it. It's a hybrid, so you can actually use that without a mouse and a keyboard. So it's very handy having that feature. The price of the i10 is 112 US which isn't too bad, okay, it's very cheap. And if you have a look here at the Pipo X9, for example, it's cheaper. So why would you really want to get this one? And you can get a 64 gigabit, gigabyte version of the X9 for only, what, 20 US or so more. So yeah, can't recommend it. Definitely have a look maybe at the Pipo, which is one of the best, I think, so far that I have reviewed when it comes to many PCs from China. Thank you for watching this review. Hopefully catch you in the channel with more up-and-coming reviews on tech. Bye for now.